Welcome to this online worship service at the Old Presbyterian Meeting House. Whether you are a longtime member or a first time visitor, know that there is a place here for you. This is our 10th Sunday of online worship, and I want to applaud the staff for their expertise in making these services possible. We are slowly but surely learning new skills to enhance our ministry during this strange time of physical isolation. These skills are on full display today as our youth lead us in worship and do it with the addition of video. Special thanks to our youth director, Mary Pratt, and to all those who have contributed to this worship service. While none of us knows what the future will bring to the meeting house, I think you will agree that with youth like these, we will be in good hands. Let us now prepare our hearts and minds for worship. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it.
Hi, I'm William Fitzpatrick, a senior and a part of the Old Presbyterian Meeting House Youth Group. Three simple words, let love lead, mean a lot to our youth group, and we've been studying these words and trying to practice their message all year. On our ski trip to Massanetta, we decided that these words were going to be the theme for our Youth Sunday this year. We then began analyzing and dissecting each word to find the biblical message and implications of the phrase. The word let made the youth think of allowing or giving Christ the opportunity to enter and change our lives. The word love is more loaded and took us more time to unpack. We determined that the kind of love we are talking about when we say let love lead is not conditional love. That is, sub that is subject to change depending on the circumstances, but rather it's unconditional love that is freely given and never earned. An everlasting love. As a youth group, we studied Bible verses that re reinforced the existence of, and power of God's unconditional love. The verse that is special to me and also connects to God's unconditional love is Jeremiah th chapter 31, verse 3. It is special to me because when I received my first Bible in fourth grade from the meeting house, that was a verse that Dr. Lehe picked out and marked in my Bible. This verse is now coming full circle in my life because it's very meaningful to me sentimentally, but it also helps me connect even more to the message of letting love lead. The verse from Jeremiah says, I have loved you with an everlasting love. Therefore, I have continued my faithfulness to you. The love God shows us uh, is eternal and is the most powerful type of love. This type of love that we are given um, by God is the type of uh, love that we are trying to show others. Lastly, the word lead uh, to us meant that we need to allow God um, to take us in a good direction of faith. The word lead means that action needs to be taken in our lives to drive us towards Christ. So we started a group chat where we would send each other random acts of kindness that we did every day. These acts range from holding the door for someone or checking in on a friend that was struggling. We did these acts of kindness to show our unconditional love for others and try to live out the message of these words, letting love lead. Another perfect example of letting love lead started last week when I got a text from our beloved youth director, Beth Simmons, telling me to look outside. I jumped up and went to the window, only to see that her and her whole family we're in my driveway with chalk drawing on it, messages of love. I was immediately filled with joy. I went outside, being, being sure to continue social distancing, and I greeted them. I asked why they were here, and they replied, it's because we missed you. This random act of kindness brightened my day. We chatted for a while, and I thanked them profusely for their expression of love for me, as they were leaving, they gave me and my brother a bag of candy. This wonderful show of unconditional love inspired me to go and do the same for one of my friends. Later that week, I went and stopped by one of my friend's house and texted him to come outside and look out his window. He had no idea it was coming and he saw me and it brightened his day, just like the Simmons had done for me. He came out and we chatted and caught up. Later, he told me that it was a good surprise because with the current state of the world, it's hard to see friends, and it was nice to see me. This spirit of letting love lead and the love from Beth's family spread to me and then to my friend. That is what letting love is lead is all about. Letting love lead is always important, but during these hard times, it is especially important to carry out the message in whatever way we can. I think we can all admit it is easier to say the phrase, let love lead, than to actually live it out. It is especially difficult when we are frustrated and fatigued by our current situation and struggling to know what to do. As a community of faith, let us come together now and confess our sins and the ways we have fallen short in this calling to lead with love. Loving and faithful God, we, we have, have listened, listened over and, and over to the stories you told, told to, to the earliest, earliest followers to teach us how to live. And yet, we seem to forget the important lesson, to love others as we love ourselves. Forgive us, Lord, when we look the other way, 
when we think of our own interests first. During these times of isolation, we know that we have sometimes been grumpy and felt sorry for ourselves when we could have offered words of encouragement to others. Help us to be the ones who lead with love and spread your message of hope. Amen. Hear the good news. God has given us amazing grace, forgiving all our shortcomings. Let the message of Easter live in your heart and continue to strengthen you. Good morning to everyone. Today we're going to read parts of three Bible stories that you are probably familiar with. Then after we read them, we'll talk about them and see what they have in common with each other and what they have to do with worship today. Some of us read and discussed these stories and then, then acted them out on our winter retreats at Massanetta. So we will now share some photos and clips from the retreat while we read. The first is the story of Jesus and the tax collector, Zacchaeus. It's from the book of Luke. Then Jesus entered and walked through Jericho. There was a man there. His name is Zacchaeus. The head tax man and quite rich. He wanted desperately to see Jesus, but the crowd was in his way. He was a short man and couldn't see over the crowd. So he ran on ahead and climbed up in a sycamore tree so he could see Jesus when he came by. When Jesus got to the tree, he looked up and said, Zacchaeus, hurry down. Today is my day to be a guest in your home. Zacchaeus scrambled out of the tree, hardly believing his good luck. Delighted to take Jesus home with him. All the people saw this and began to complain. What business does he have getting cozy with this crook? I told you I believe in second chances. Jesus, no. Zacchaeus is a bad man. Wow, that was a good meal, Zacchaeus. Thank you. You know what, Jesus? I'm going to give half of my possessions to the poor. And if I cheated them, I'll give them four times as much. Jesus, don't let him do that. Zacchaeus is a bad man. <laughs> you get out of here. You know what? Zacchaeus, son of Abraham, today a changed man has become of you. The next two Bible readings are stories Jesus told. The first is the story of the Good Samaritan, also from the book of Luke. There was once a man traveling from Jerusalem to Jericho. On the way, he was attacked by robbers. They took his clothes, beat him up, and went off, leaving him badly hurt beside the road. Luckily, a priest was on his way down the same road, but when he saw him, he angled across to the other side. Then, a Levite religious man showed up. He also avoided the injured man. A Samaritan traveling down the road came on him. When he saw the man's condition, his heart went out to him. He gave him first aid, disinfecting and bandaging his wounds. Then he lifted the, him onto his donkey, led him to an inn, and made him comfortable. In the morning, he took out two silver coins and gave them to the innkeeper, saying, Take good care of him. If it costs any more, put it on my bill. I'll pay you on my way back. And finally is the story of the prodigal son, again from Luke. There was once a man who had two sons. The younger said to his father, Father, I want right now what is to come to me. So the father divided the property between them. It wasn't long before the younger son packed his bags and left for a distant there, country. Undisciplined and dissipated, he wasted everything he had. After he had gone through all his money, there was a bad famine all throughout that country and he began to hurt on with a citizen there who assigned him to the, his fields to slop the pigs. He was so hungry he would have eaten the corn cobs in the pig slop, but no one would give him any. That brought him to his senses. He said, all those farmhands working for my father sit down to three meals a day and here I am starving to death. I am going back to my father. I'll say to him, father, I have sinned against God. I have sinned before you. I don't deserve to be called your son. Take me on as a hired hand. He got right up and went home to his father. When he was still a long way off, his father saw him. His heart pounding, he ran out, embraced him, and kissed him. The son started his speech. Father, 
I've sinned against God. I've sinned before you. I don't deserve to be called your son ever again. But the father wasn't listening. He called to the servants, quick, bring a clean set of clothes and dress him. Put the family ring on his finger and sandals on his feet. My son is here, given up for dead. And they began to have a wonderful time. <laughs> All this time, his older brother was out in the field. When the day's work was done, he came in. As he approached the house, he heard music and dancing. He asked what was going on. He told him, your brother came home. Your father has ordered a feast. The older brother stalked off in an angry sulk and refused to join in. His father came out and tried to talk to him. Many of you have probably heard these stories before, maybe in Sunday school or Bible school. Each of them helps us to understand what it means to let love lead. In each of these stories, someone reaches out to someone else. In the first story, it's Jesus who is being friendly to an unpopular man named Zacchaeus, and he asks him if he can visit his home and gives him a second chance. In the story of the Good Samaritan, a man helps someone who is different from him, helping him after he has been attacked. And in the story of the prodigal son, a father lovingly welcomes home his son, who has done some bad things. In all these stories, someone does something that other people think is a little crazy. They show love and kindness to someone who is unpopular, different from them, or has done some bad things. By doing all these acts of kindness, they're showing others what it means to love as God loves us. Jesus hoped that by doing the things he did and by telling us stories like this, he would be leading us to love people too, even when it might be hard or even when we might be afraid of what other people think of us. And when we do what Jesus has taught us and show love to people, we might be teaching or leading others to do the same thing. Let's pray together now. Repeat after me. Dear God, Dear God, Dear God help us to remember these stories you taught. Help, help us, us to remember, remember these stories you taught. So that we may spread your love to others. So, so that, that we, we may spread, spread your love to others. And now, may God be with you there. May God be with us here. May God be, may with, God be with everyone everywhere. everywhere. Amen. 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 Today we have talked a lot about letting God's love shine through us and how we should try to let that love lead us as we live our lives. 
But what does letting love lead really look like? We have just heard some examples from our scripture of how the love in Let Love Lead appears a lot in the Bible. Whether it's the story of the Good Samaritan showing mercy unto his neighbor despite their culture's disagreements, or how Jesus seeks out Zacchaeus because he sees the good in every one of us. But not all of us have a mean tax collector up in a tree waiting for us to change his heart. So the question remains, how do we apply this message and let love lead in our daily lives? We apply this message by letting God's love affect both our actions and decisions in life. This can be as small as taking a breath before approaching a frustration or task that's been weighing you down, or as big as extending an olive branch with love in your heart to someone that you've struggled to connect with. I know for myself at least, there have been some times where it's very difficult to lead with love instead of anger and hate. Over the summers of my life, I've been at a sleepaway camp in North Carolina. This past summer was my first summer as a counselor in a cabin of 12 eight-year-olds. The days were long and hot, sometimes reaching over 110 degrees, and the campers were picking fights with each other for what felt like every other minute. One of my campers, Jack, was consistently lashing out at his cabin mates. He would accuse them of taking things that were his or scream at them if he felt that he was wronged. I was determined to confront him about this behavior. It was a day so hot that our clothes stuck to our skin, drenched in sweat from running activities all day. My cabin's table at lunch was unusually quiet, with all the kids too busy gulping down Powerade and water to laugh and talk with one another. After a while, a fight broke out over whose turn it was to fill the water pitcher. It escalated quickly and ended a Jack kicking a kid and knocking all the Powerade and water off the table, spilling it everywhere. I told Jack, Jack, go outside, I'll speak to you in a second, and as my co-counselor soothed the other camper, I marched to the door to meet him. I was really frustrated and ready to scream at him and chew him out right then and there. But I paused when I was a few steps from the door and thought back to a conversation I had the summer before when I was asking one of my older brother's friends what it was like to be a counselor. He told me, you always have to remember to love these kids unconditionally. Treat them as if they were your own. Many of them don't have people at home asking them how they are that aren't their parents. They may need that older brother figure that they can really open up to. So I went out to his sobbing Jack and asked him what was going on, asked him what was wrong. I told him, Jack, this isn't you. This isn't the kid who made a list of every single activity out here so he didn't miss one with his friends. He looked up at me and told me about how he felt like he had no friends or he didn't like it, it was too hot, and among a long list of disappointments. I told him it was okay to be upset, but it's not okay to push away those who can help you. And instead, you should let them be there for you when you fall. After we talked for a minute, he apologized and offered to clean up the table. And a few days later, I saw him on activity with the same kid he kicked. If I had led with frustration and anger, I may have just created another wall between Jack and I. But instead, he became one of my best campers. God's love can lead us down many paths. And the most difficult to travel is the path of forgiveness. I know when we feel someone has wronged us, it is easier to hold on to that hate and anger instead of turning toward forgiveness. However, God's love is unconditional, and we should live out this message by forgiving those around us. But we have to let God's love guide us to extend the olive branch to neighbors, friends, family, and we must forgive. But leading with love every single day can be difficult. It is hard not to let the anger get the best of us. It may feel easier to choose to hold a grudge over someone instead of forgiving them and starting anew. Luckily for us, we all have friends, family, and this congregation to help us stay on track. There are other ways to stay on track as well, like daily devotions, reading scripture, praying. All of these can help us feel God's love in our lives. Another way to let love lead in our lives is to share God's love with others. For a few weeks now, a big group of youth and college students have been exchanging letters with members of this congregation, sharing about their lives in quarantine and hearing about others. I have been fortunate enough to connect with some amazing members of this congregation, some of whom I've met in person, some of whom I've never had the chance to say hi to. I've received wonderful stories and excellent advice on what books to read, movies to watch, and what Lego Star Wars ships to build. Now, I would invite, if you all would gather your card making 
supplies. I'd like to invite you all to write a note to another member of the congregation, a family member, or a friend who needs some love during these uncertain times. Let us spread God's love by lifting one another up with messages of hope and love. While you write those letters, I'm sure to uplift the spirits of the recipients. Here's Grace Williams on the piano. Thank you for the wonderful music, Grace. Make sure to get those cards in the mail and send them soon. Thanks for taking the time to spread the love. Now, let's get up and get moving. What's up, guys? Who's ready to move? Hey, catch this. Thanks, man. Let's go. <laughs> let's go. We're about to learn the dance to My Lighthouse. You guys may know this song from last time we did it. It's a great song, and we're going to learn all the movements. Make sure you have plenty of space around you, because we are going to be moving around and dancing. Make sure, also, be sure to stretch, stretch it out a little bit. You don't want to pull a hammy or anything like that. All right, the first move we're going to learn is My Lighthouse. We're going to make a lighthouse with our arms, like this. And then we're going to clap twice when they say My Lighthouse. Then we're gonna be shining in the darkness. So you just you just shine your lights everywhere. Shine in the darkness. Shine your lights. After that, the words are "I will follow you." So you gotta pretend like you're following someone. Just hit the strong strides. Keep those elbows tight. I will follow you. Right after that, we're gonna be repeating my lighthouse again. So just throw up the lighthouse again, just like before. After that, we're gonna be trusting the promise. So you're trust trusting the promise, just like that. Just give yourself a hug. Up next. I will carry you. So you gotta carry them. Just like the little baby. Rock the baby, carry you. Then after that, just to wrap it up, we're gonna be safe to shore. So we're just gonna make a wave, just like this, all around. You can you can do the same way again, you can switch it up. So you switch it up with the other way. Doesn't matter. 
Make it whatever you want. That's right. it. That's it. That's, That's it. You guys ready to try it? Let's go. Let's hit it. Now let's give it up for our youth and let's Ready? watch them do this. Let's go. Let's go. along with us. Hello, my name is Lily Church and I am a senior at T.C. Williams High School and a member of the OPMH Youth Group. Although my senior year is not ending the way I was expecting it to, I've made many lasting memories throughout my four years at T.C. 
It is a very large school, so more often than not, you meet many new people through the classes you take. Last year, I walked into my AP Psychology class expecting to see some of my friends there, but I quickly realized I knew no one besides one girl who I only knew because I went to elementary school with her. We ended up sitting next to each other and slowly became closer throughout the first month of school. One day, she mentioned to me that her sister was unable to take her to school the next morning. I knew she lived close to me, but I was hesitant to say something because I enjoyed my solo drive to school in the morning. I mustered up the courage and offered her a ride even though it was way out of my comfort zone to do so. I know it sounds silly, but I was so nervous even though we'd been getting closer the, over the past month. The next morning, I got to her house and it turns out we listened to the same kind of music. I ended up driving her to school the rest of the year and continued to drive her to school this past year even though we no longer had classes together. I didn't realize that when I was offering a ride that one morning, I was opening up the opportunity to become close friends with her. This story was the first thing I thought of when I was presented with the question of how letting love lead can lead to new unexpected relationships. I had no idea at the time, but offering her that ride that one morning would lead to me making one of my closest friends. It can sometimes be scary to let love lead, but God rewards those risks. One way our church community is letting love lead is through Open Table. This past year, I had been given the opportunity to take part in this event that I had heard of before, but never had gotten the chance to participate in. My two friends, Caroline and Emily Surratt, who you'll see shortly, called me one night and told me, we're going to open table this week and you're coming with us. Shocked with how assertive they were, it took me a second to gather my thoughts. Starting in 2013, OPMH took on the task of providing those in need with breakfast. The ambitious church members who started the program opened up the possibility of allowing other members to take part in letting love lead. Not realizing that we would be going to open table before school, I questioned how we would have the time to do so. The thought of waking up at 5.30 on a school day was not appealing to me, but I agreed since I was curious how the church was able to run a program like this. The first time we went, we mostly stayed in the kitchen, unsure of whether or not we should go out and talk to the others that were there. As we continued to go every other week, we were able to meet many different people from many different backgrounds that we would have probably never met any other way. If Caroline and Emily had not taken initiative and invited, well, not invited, but told me to go with them, I would have missed out on meeting some of the most interesting people I've ever met. With the virus causing many changes the past couple of months, Open Table is one program that has changed drastically. I, along with Caroline and Emily, were able to get in touch with some of the church members who make Open Table possible in order to ask them about the changes that have happened to Open Table and what we as church members can do to help. Here's a video we put together to highlight the, this important ministry and show the creative ways our church has adapted to make sure that love can continue to lead. I'm Susan Grandy, and I've been doing Open Table since the first day, and I think that was in 2014. So it's almost seven years old or something like that, a long time. Um, we started Open Table because another church had a breakfast, and we thought we could do this and we should do this. And it's just become part of my life and one of the better days of my week. And um, people who get involved in it have somewhat the same thing to say. It just becomes part of who we are, um, thankfully. And so that, that's it every Thursday. My name's Morgan Jones. Um, I I think I started doing Open Table about four years ago um, with Susan. And what struck me um, is that it's more than just serving breakfast. It's, it's not us or them. We sit down and we have breakfast um, as friends, as a family. And we've built relationships over the, year, uh, over the years. And um, I think that's a really incredible um, part of open table it's more than just the food it's it's really a community and that's a testament to all of susan's work that she's done and all of the many volunteers who show up every thursday morning and who help in other ways too um, not just the people who are there thursday but there are so many people who contribute to open table in such meaningful ways are there any difficulties that you guys are facing with this virus and just how you guys run open table now I would not say difficulties. We saw this coming and we all just believed without thinking about it that we can do this. And we weren't exactly sure what to do and it kind of evolved, but we have followed all the CDC standards. We are very careful. 
we decided the first day we are not cooking anything or touching anything. So it was a bit of a challenge to find food that we could afford that was really good. And we have, and that's kind of expanded. The people go away carrying bags that I think are heavy. Um, so that's thanks to a lot of people. It just shows we have kind of a canopy and it has rained. Um, so we're out there in the rain, in the cold, in the dark. And um, people can stay for one minute. We're working with four people or five volunteers on Thursdays. And that's to keep the distance easier. And we have, <clears throat> I'm sorry, these packed lunches, which we do on Wednesday. So we don't have to assemble anything. It's much quicker than you would have seen when you come. It's basically greeting and handing out these big bags. And it's not been a challenge, a hardship. We've had no problems. Um, we just have, sometimes we have to do plan B and it's all fine. Just building on what Susan said, there was this email thread, like right away when, th when it became very clear that it was no longer safe to meet in a heritage hall in the same way. What was so amazing to me was the volunteers. Susan started this email thread and right away it was following the CDC guidelines. How can we do this safely? And I was so amazed, all the volunteers just chiming in um, right away, working through a plan. Um, it was really inspiring. Why is it important that we continue Open Table during this time? Um, we were just wondering how the people who normally attend Open Table have uh, been affected by you continuing this. Well, um, for the first, like, four weeks, we couldn't tell who was there because it was so dark and we saw them for one minute. But this past Thursday, we actually could recognize people. One of the difficulties of our old friends coming is we can't hug them. We can't even really talk to them. I mean, we all go out on the sidewalk um, and stand six or eight feet apart, but it's just for a few minutes. So that is our loss. We have lost a little bit of touch with each other and um, we have always listened to them and we've always prayed together in a big circle and now we can't touch each other. And that, that's been a difficult part. Um, so we pretty much look like a place handing out meals, but we call each other by our first names. And so there is a lot of joy there. Open Table is an extension of you know what Rocky and Catherine and Anne have been preaching about and staying connected. Um, and what you all are doing and Mary and Noel and writing notes and staying connected and what Susan said, it's more than just the food. It's um, this beautiful um, extension of how we care and love for people in our community. That's a wonderful thing. Yes. Um, could you share a brief story from Open Table that may be meaningful for you personally or that is meaningful for others to hear that you've experienced over these years? One of the things that touches me a lot is about you all. Um, I know you don't need to come. And we've had um, students over the years. And that really touches me that you want to be part of this. And I think a lot of people want to be part of it. Morgan came when she was pregnant. And, um, you know, so we have such a, a wide variety of people who are really faithful. One of the joys we have is a family that started with us on the very first day, and they had a little baby who was six months old. And we have celebrated every birthday with him. He's seven now. And they come less because he's in school, which is great. Uh, we have had birthday cakes in the shape of trucks and, you know, small gifts of, you know, small toys and things like that. But that has been a joy that we are of many generations. And we have learned so much from that family and felt their love for us. And we think they come because they know we love them very much. And that's, that's been a joy. Um, yeah, I, I feel like I'm echoing everything Susan so beautifully has said. But um, equally, you, you know, I, I was really and continue to be inspired by the multi-generational aspect of Open Table. That high schoolers show up before school. Yeah. I mean, that's 
pretty incredible. And then to go to school for a full day and then go home and do homework. And you have people who are showing up before they work or do more volunteering. And I think that's really, really amazing. Um, and then on the relationship side of it, um, that people kind of what Susan was saying, that they care so deeply about us too. I mean, it, it really is a family and it's not just checking in with people who come or, you know, our friends who come to open table, but they ask about us and our families and they care so deeply about us in the same way that we care about everyone at open table. I just continue to see God's grace through open table and with Mary Noel are doing so much have inspired me uh, and our family to do some artwork for, for open table to show our love and, and stay connected. For uh, open table. Uh, and do you have any questions? About <laughs> <laughs> did you make a rainbow? Yeah. What, what did you make? A rainbow. A rainbow? Rainbow. Do you have a question about it? It's a big rainbow. <laughs> the rainbow said, we're all in this together. And lastly, um, in addition to beautiful artwork, um, is there anything that the church members that we can do additionally to help out with Open Table? You know, I... Um, we have felt from the beginning called by God to do this work and we have felt able to do it because of this church. We have huge church support and I think prayers are the most important thing you can give us. And when we need things, we can't, we can't take a whole lot because we have no storage space. But when we need things, I send out an email and things show up. But it's your prayers that, um, that I would say keep us going, and it's going to make me cry. <laughs> anyway, thank you. Oh, well, thank you so much. Um, in a second, I think Maddie um, is going to join us. Um, hey. Can I share a bit more? Well, hey, Maddie. Um, how did you get involved um, with Open Table in the first place? Um, I started in middle school. Um, I'd come to, yeah, I'd come to, um, the breakfast, um, right before school. And then that was sporadic. But once, um, all of this hit, I, one, really wanted something that I could do to help the community, but also, um, my mom was helping out and Susan's the best. So I wanted to be a part of that community. And, um, you know, we see people, for everywhere um, around Alexandria that this group is helping. Um, so it's just a great way to be a part of the community during all of these times when you don't necessarily feel like you have a community. So, yeah. But thank you so much everyone for talking to us. And it's awesome to see the awesome work that Open Table is doing. And I'm glad that we can share it with the congregation as well. Hi, I'm Caroline and this is Liam. No matter where you are, on your couch, in your bed, or at your kitchen table, we are glad you're virtually here with us. There are so many names to mention, but we are so grateful for all the people behind the scenes who helped put this together. We are continuing to find ways to connect, even with this difficult time, with things like a virtual coffee hour on Sunday mornings. Cheers, Caroline. Cheers. virtual gratitude gatherings on Fridays at noon, and virtual children's music. Just like this. Bridges to worship, and of course, youth group meetings. To learn more, please visit our website, sign up for the weekly egram, and join the hashtag connect group via the member login on our website. You can also connect with our office manager, Mark Wills for our weekly list of prayer concerns. And please don't hesitate to reach out to our pastors if you are in need of connection, pastoral care, or help of any kind. So much is different in our lives today. And yet, so, and yet much is still the same. We still find strength in one another, and we still seek to respond to God's call. While we can't literally pass the offering plate right now, We are still called to bring our offerings before God. We encourage you to keep, it, keep your minds and hearts open 
to how God might be able to use you during this time. And we encourage you to continue to support the ministry of this church as you respond to the challenges before us. During this time of physical distancing, the Meeting House youth has gathered over video for times of sharing, card making, games, singing, dancing, and always ending with prayer. We'd like to pray together with all of you now as we have for the past several, several weeks. It's modeling after our circle prayer that we do together when we are in person. Let us pray. Loving and gracious God, even in this uncertain, scary time, we have so many things to be thankful for, more than we could even count. We are so thankful for the love that is being preached and sung about today, the unconditional love that is poured out for all of us each day. Even this op opportunity to gather remotely is a huge gift. All around us, there are blessings and joys, both big and small. Hear now some of the prayers and things that are on our hearts today. I'm thankful for a roof over my head and food and water. I'm thankful for my family's health and for the time I get to spend with my family now and for these Zooms that we do. I'm thankful for all the um, people who are doing their time and effort to find a treatment. I'm thankful that my family is safe. I'm thankful for people who work in hospitals and grocery stores. I'm thankful for learning to value family. <laughs> Thank you for all my family members being home. Thank you for everyone who is helping everyone who is sick. Thank you for the people who are risking their lives to help those in need. Almighty God, we also come with heavy hearts today. There are a lot of unanswered questions and uncertainty in the world right now. Also, lots of people are needing some extra love in their lives for lots of reasons. Here now are prayers of concern. Pray for all the people who don't have a home to stay at and they are on the streets. I hope that we and all the healthcare workers and many other people working towards helping people in need to stay safe and healthy. healthy. I'm praying for all the people who are sick. I'm praying for people who don't have health care. I pray for people who have lost their jobs. I pray for people like Sam Baker who have lost loved ones. I pray for all the people who are scared of the virus. I'm praying for everyone who needs help and is in a bad situation. I am praying for friends and family who are overseas and are separated from loved ones without means of communication. Thank you, God, for your unconditional love and for all the blessings and joys in each day that help us through our sadness and hard times. Hear these prayers we say out loud today around this group and also those prayers that are quiet on our hearts. Be with us in this coming week and in all we say and do. Let us pray together now using the prayer Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen.
lives are a lot different right now. A lot of the way we live is changing. The way we shop, the way we visit one another, the way we celebrate birthdays. Maybe it's also a chance to change the way we make decisions too and start letting love lead our actions and words. Maybe this looks like being nicer to your siblings that we've been cooped up with for a few months now. And by the way, Grace, it was really fun making this sermon video with you and hearing your awesome piano playing. What would that look like for each of us? I speak for everyone when I say the process of putting this together has been really enjoyable and it brought the youth together during our many meetings over the past few months. It gave us a break from the hectic world we live in right now and helped us focus on some positives in our lives. And we hope that y'all enjoyed watching this as much as we did. And in a time where our circumstances have made it tough to connect with people, we hope this helped you connect with others and your faith. Now it's your turn. We don't know what the next few months are going to be like, but we can still go out and spread God's unconditional and everlasting love. Make the change to let love lead our decisions now and always.